I praise and thank God for this beautiful morning that the Lord has given us to come in His presence and to meditate upon His word. For our meditation today, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife hath made herself ready. As we have entered the new year, with a new determination and a dedication. Let us be more careful about our spiritual walk. When we look at the developments taking place around the world, the signs are very clear that we don't have much time before us. The bridegroom is about to come. He is coming as a thief in the clouds. The world will not see him, but those who are eagerly waiting for his coming, the bride, the church, will be caught up and is going to spend eternity with her bridegroom in heaven where there won't be any more time. And the blessings that are there, no eyes can ever imagine. Heaven will be a totally different place. We can't even think of it. Because no eyes have seen what God has prepared for those who love Him. Garden of Eden was just a paradise on this earth. And when we see the relationship of man with God. Man did not always sense God's presence. It was only in the cool of the day that he could sense the presence of God. In those days, it was a blessed experience for Adam. But heaven will be a totally different experience where there won't be any sun because God himself is the light there won't be any sin. Since God is perfect, everything there will be perfect. Now when we look at the life of the patriarch Abraham, who is also known as the father of the faithful, his life reflected his faith. His, all his actions and deeds, words, Reveal the faith he had on God. He was not a perfect man. He did, he did commit mistakes like us. But how did he grow up to that maturity to become the friend of God? He learned from his mistakes and that is what helped him to grow to that maturity. If we compare Abraham with us, he did not have the word of God in a written form the way we have. He, Holy Spirit God was not indwelling in him. He did not have the promises or the prophecies like we have. Still, he trusted God and his life was a life of faith. And if we compare the present-day Christians, so-called Christians, with Abraham. We have the Word of God in so many languages. And still, now as the year 2021 has come, you must have observed many, many speakers prophesying that this year will be like this or that. A question. When we have the precious word of God who is eternal and the word of God though written so many centuries ago still when you read it it appears as though God is talking to me now. The freshness has never gone away. Do we need this so-called prophecies as we enter the new year? Many so-called prophets and apostles, 
they come up with so many things to make people happy isn't the word of god enough for us that we have to hear all these all these things that man says many diverse kinds of prophecies when we have the word of god we know for sure the coming of the lord is very near we don't need any more extra confirmations this itself shows that those who don't have that faith in god's word they want to hear something that's good for their ears but for a true child of god when he hears the word world news daily he is glad and his faith grows because he knows his father's word are true the spirit of god that dwells in a child of god compels him to get ready god uses his servants in our lives to help us know our weaknesses correct us encourage us to help us build our faith so that we can grow to the maturity of christ but one thing is very clear from the word of god that it is it is up to a person whether he wants to get ready or not god will not force god doesn't change he is the same yesterday today and forever god who dwelt with abraham will deal with us also in the same manner he cannot be soft with us and tough tough with others god did not force abraham for anything but look at abraham he on his own was ready to obey the lord's word abraham was called for the promised land and the standards which god wants in his life was to set up an example for the generations to come who will abide in that promised land then we who are called to be the part of the body of christ the church do we realize how high the standard god expects from our life so that our life may reflect the beauty of christ and eternity when lord jesus walked on this earth his life was an express image of god whose glory no man has ever seen then we as members of his body we are supposed to be the witness of christ that reveals the beauty the perfection of heaven let the world realize the glory of the true god through our words and deeds let our life be the light that directs people to that celestial city for the true reflection of that glory in our life we mu- we must live a life according to the heavenly standards when warning bells are ringing all around us that wants that wants us to get up from our slumber and lay and throw away our laziness and get ready to meet our bridegroom our loving savior let us use each day wisely for our preparation in the coming days through our meditation we'll be examining our lives in the light of the word of god to find the things which are against the divine nature let us take time to cleanse ourselves to become more beautiful within and then as we get ready within the beauty will be automatically reflected in all the areas of our life then our life will be a ray of hope for many who are still struggling in darkness what a great responsibility god has entrusted us may the lord help us let us pray father we praise you and thank you for this beautiful morning thank you for the precious word that you have given us lord your coming is so near heaven is getting ready for the marriage of the lamb we as the bride help each one of us to get ready find out our meet, uh, mistakes shortcomings in our life and correct them so that we be ready to see you 
in the clouds. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May the Lord help us in these days as we meditate upon the word to find our shortcomings, our mistakes, so that we get ready. May the Lord bless us. Our Lord is coming very soon. Maranatha.